I'm a field technician for Hudson Incorporated, who's a John Deere dealer in Western Kentucky. And I'm, uh, I'm on the mechanical side of it, not in the selling part of it, but I'm, I'm out in the field either helping to calibrate or helping to set or helping to repair these machines. And, and I want to thank Ben for what he has said, and I don't want to take anything away from what he said, but I want to just kind of add to it. This is a good product. It's a lot like the deer. It's probably more like the deer than maybe the Great Plains was. Uh, one of the things that I, I would highly advise when we, when we go to the field is there are some, there are some constants that, that you can put together when you put your chart together for calibration and that's seeds, seeds per pound and the size of the seed and what your target population is and the depth that you want it. And the question was raised a few minutes ago about the no-till versus conventional till and, and how the downforce would, would react. And, and as he said, the hydraulic system is pretty responsive as far as that goes. But one of the things that, that I see from time to time is people think, okay, we, we're going to put all the downforce we can on here and we're going to get the seed in the ground, but they've only got the gauge wheel set for a quarter of an inch deep. And, and we'll never get it to our three quarter because we're holding the planter out of the ground, whether it's a corn planter or wheat drill, either one. So, so make sure you've checked that and make sure, uh, as he said, this, this uh, closing wheel, and, and Deere's closing wheel is a little different than that, but all it's doing is, is pushing that sidewall closed onto the seed and our gauge wheel is, is holding the, the unit out of the ground. This is our disc opener and you know, I get the question on the phone quite a bit, hey, what's worn out on a disc? Well, you know, the new specification is probably 17, 18 inches long or diameter. If it's down to 14, it's worn out. But, but generally, if you look at a new or fairly new blade, it will have a beveled edge. Once that beveled edge is gone, we've pretty much used the, the best of that disc. Will it plan in conventional? It'll do fine. But we get into a no-till situation, or if we're using this for soybeans in wheat stubble, it's really going to struggle. You're going to have that bulldozing or that hairpinning. The other thing, and, and I'm not being critical of this particular machine, but the gauge wheel needs to run fairly close to this disc. And, and it should, when I turn the disc, it should let that gauge wheel walk with it sort of. If it's too far away that it won't turn at all, it's too far away or it's, or it's worn out, it's chewed up or whatever, okay? Uh, and these machines, regardless of the color, they're, they're pretty maintenance free. You've got a wear item of the tire and the disc blade and the seed boot. The seed boot, I think people overlook because they think, well, it's just going to last forever. But once it gets down, it's starting to wear off, it's what's getting that seed down to where we want it. And, and that's the whole idea behind getting a good stand of wheat is getting it where we want it to get the right soil and soil contact with the seed to allow it to be there to grow. Uh, downforce, I don't like to run any more than necessary. If, and, and you know, there's mechanical gauges available. There's the the monitoring system that will tell you where it's at. I don't like any more than necessary to get the seed in the ground because the more we're using, the more wear and tear we have on our parts. It's just a little harder on everything. Uh, another thing that, that I wanted to make sure is when we're working around these drills, you know, make sure that we've got our safety locks in place. We don't want anybody getting hurt and crushed by something. If somebody's with you, make sure both people know where each other are at all times. Uh, calibrations on the John Deere air seeder cart is a lot like this one. You know, the technology is the same. Uh, on this machine with the air cart, you know, you're using, you're using a, a central tank to, to, to meter the seed and then the, the fan just distributes to the row unit. So, uh, our situation is much the same. Uh, we've got a box drill inside that we still actually see some used. Uh, the row unit on those on the John Deere is just like what 
the John Deere air seeder has. Just absolutely nearly part for part the same. The one thing I've seen on calibrations that, that seems to get people confused and when you're when you're caught when I get a phone call, hey, we're not we don't think we're putting enough seed or we're putting too much seed or we're just not sure. We we just don't have any idea. You know, we're going we need to find out our rate, we need to find out the seeds per pound, the size of the seed, and then get our meter setting and on the air drill that has the tank mounted on it, like you sell, deers, you know, there's different meter wheels you can put in there. And, you know, I was in the field with canola last year, and it's hard to use a canola wheel for, or a wheat wheel for canola. It's just almost impossible. The seed size is much too different. Now, the coated canola seemed to work a little better in the wheat meter than the non-coated, but still you really kind of need to, it's kind of like a sprayer and they're trying to get 50 gallon of water through a 10 gallon tip. It's hard to do, okay? Uh, so kind of pay a close attention to those things. The other thing is when you change fields, change varieties, stop and check it again. Stop and check it again. And don't always rely on what a computer screen or monitor is telling you. Get out and look. Dig around. Do a little seed count. Make sure you're where you want it to be. Uh, it, it just takes a few minutes to kind of make sure. And I always tell people, if I've got a 50 acre field, before I change fields, let's stop and see how much seed did we put on that 50 acres. So we know that, okay, we were in pretty good shape on this field before we go and plant a thousand acres and say, hey, Scott, we're not sure what's going on here because I think we would probably agree most of the time it's not, and I'm not saying the machines are foolproof, but most of the time it's a setting issue rather than a malfunction in the machine that, that causes a seeding rate problem. Something's not set right. If it's a ground-driven machine, we don't have the right sprockets. If it's depth that we're having problems with, we're, we're something's set wrong. Uh, or something's worn where we can't get it in the ground. Uh, and the blockage monitors, they're helpful. But, you know, get out and do a look every now and then. There's nothing better than getting out and looking. So, and that's probably what I wanted to say. Uh, the, cleaner the, the cleaner the seed going in there, the better the blockage monitor works. I've had a few problems with, with our manifolds of anybody's, you know, with trashy wheat. Uh, but that's, that's not very, you know, that's not something we see much anymore. I guess when we when we come to these things, we think, well, somebody's going to have a great big tale to tell. But I was I was in the field one day last uh, last fall, and and I know it was hot and it was dry, and people were wanting to get things done. And I guess we were getting in a hurry, and the farmer was in a hurry, and and we were we were trying to calibrate a drill for canola. And we were we were making our pass, and, and you know you, if you're we were doing a we were doing a catch out here, okay, and, and that's a good way to do it. But we were doing it out here, and we were using this passageway to to check. And we had our measurement, we had our flag, and we had our driver turning it on and off. But we were moving across, and nobody realized the section control was still activated. So we were getting highly erratic readings because it was, it was shutting it off and we didn't know it. And finally we realized that, you know, there's, there's nothing coming out. What have we done now? And, and I'm out here with the drill and they're in there and I'm like, something's wrong. And I kept looking and looking and looking, section controls on. When we came by there, it was shutting off like it was supposed to. But, uh, and that's another thing. I know this is for small grains, but when you're doing corn, beans, small grains, if you're going to spend the money to use section control, swath control, you, I highly recommend get out and look to make sure it happens, or make sure it's working like it's supposed to. I, I work a lot in combines, and somebody says, well, which would you rather go to the field with, combines or planters? I said, well, I'd a whole lot rather go field with a combine. And they'll say, why is that? I said, I can tell you right now if we're doing a good job.
But I have to wait a week to find out if I did, good, did a good job with a, a air seeder or planter. And then I really get embarrassed when I start having these big skips or overlaps because I didn't, didn't do the section control right. And with that said, the constant measurements for section control are highly critical. Tractor distance from receiver to implement contact. If those things aren't right, the start-stop times will never be right. So regardless of the color of the machine.